that last Azvek brew was pretty all right. And having had only one sultry stout of theirs so far, today seemed like a pretty good day to make that too. And just between us, I actually picked this one out in complete error, as I'd intended to order the peanut butter stout. But thankfully that tap takeover last week had me sorted. And boy was it some treat. So I'm expecting much more of the good stuff here. With the hazelnut dream cake. A coconut and hazelnut impy stout. Now what I will say is their cans are rather on the minimalistic side. They don't give away a whole lot. Which I'm not usually a fan of. I am definitely inclined to go for those that have got a full in-depth listing of what's inside on the can. Hops, malts, and hats off to you guys out there that even put the yeasts on there. But there is something to be said for the less is more approach. And I think these guys are working that angle quite nicely. So I'm not going to hold it against them too much. It will just be a little interesting going forward to see if they maintain this approach. Or if they crack through popular demand and follow suit like everybody else. But as they've given us absolutely nothing to work with on the outside, that leaves us with no option than to do the work ourselves. So let's get pouring. Oh, so there's a huge waft of hazelnut right up top. It is very, very nutty. You're getting that Ferrero Rocher vibe right here, which means we're picking up a little bit of chocolate too. And I want to say something like wafer or biscuit, but that could just be me reaching for the Ferrero Rocher drawer. So the first thing you notice, it's quite slick, it's a little oily, but there is also a lovely gentle carbonation bubbling away on the tongue. And then that hazelnut hits you, and it's backed up by that sweet chocolate too. And the body starts to grow ever thicker. And there is just a subtle coffee bitterness in the finish. And that coconut, although subtle, is a constant throughout. And I tell you what, it looks the part too. We're talking black hole black. There is no light escaping this. And it's got that perfect tan cappuccino head. Granted, that carbonation is just a touch on the lively side, which keeps that head from really being present. But I tell you what, now some of that carbonation is dying away, it's really opening the door for that rich, dark chocolate to take full hold up top. That heavy hit of hazelnut is now sweet and subtly creamy, but has fallen back into the middle. And that classic coffee bitter finish is dragging its way up into those middles too. And I've got to admit, for an 11% impy, you don't really get a feel for any of that booze at all. But then again, this could be one of those creepers that makes me look a right fool by falling all over the place in about three minutes time. And much like the previous brew, I think I've got one hell of a battle on my hands when it comes to dishing out the ratings. And now we're down into the beer. Some of those creamy oaty notes are really starting to push their way to the fore. And we're starting to get the first signs of that warming, spicy, boozy kiss. 11 percenters can't hide their true nature forever. And there is now an almost treacle-like quality in the finish. And it's almost, dare I say it, ever so slightly woody too. <clears throat> and you're almost getting a cherry note in those middles too. It's gone from being Ferrero Rocher to almost Black Forest Gatto. It really is the decadent dessert we all deserve. So this was another excellent showing from the Azvek team. 
It's dark, sweet, creamy, and oh, so nutty. Like you just blitzed the ambassador's Ferrero Rocher stash. But like all good things, it wasn't to last, as it soon develops into something just a little more adult. As that 11% monster you thought you'd avoided starts to creep up on you. And darker, richer, and more bittering notes start to take hold. That said, that OT creaminess does fight its way up into the top notes and does remain there till the end. It's in those middles and in that tail where you really feel the punch as it soon becomes treacly and almost licorice-like with a woody and almost spicy kick of booze to it. And that easy-going dessert stout soon becomes more of a classic impie. The Ferrero Rocher's out and the Black Forest Gatto in. And that body just adds to the enjoyment. Yes, it's a little heavy on the carbonation at first, but it does settle into a thick, sticky, almost chewy-like vibe. I thought that Asvex had perfected their IPAs, but I can tell you the stouts, they're not far behind.